I want to encourage us just because God isn't necessarily going to give us a vision or write in the clouds or send an angel to us about the big decisions that we face in life, that doesn't mean that he isn't going to speak into them. And I would contend that God speaks to us about all of the big decisions that we have to make in life. If he doesn't speak to us about it, then it's not really a big decision. Uh, maybe misplaced priorities, um, but it's not really a big decision in our life. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 is a familiar passage. It says, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Right? What is needed for every good work? Right? The Word of God is. Uh, it equips us for not 98% of the good works that God has for us. It equips us for 100% of the works that God has for us. And it's living and active, and it speaks into the situations in our life. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and the spirit of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Right? Uh, in the mind of someone 2,000 years ago, Joints and marrow were extremely difficult to understand and distinguish between. Well, what's the difference between soul and spirit? Extremely difficult to understand the distinction between soul and spirit. But it is the Word of God that's living and active, and it penetrates even to the deepest places and into the most challenging things to, disti to distinguish and understand. And of course, God's Word doesn't act alone in our lives in this. God's Holy Spirit uses the Word of God in order to speak into our lives. Um, do you guys have John 14, 26 on your sheet there? Okay, I don't have a slide for it. But, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to, you, uh, bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Right? The Spirit is working to bring, about, to bring to us the things that Jesus has said in a particular way to the disciples as they are uh, bringing about the scriptures, but also to us. He is teaching us and reminding us of what God has to say. John 16, 13 and, uh, 13 and 14, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine, and declare it to you. Uh, what is the job of the Holy Spirit? It's to glorify Jesus. You want to find a church that is Spirit-filled? It is a church that is all about glorifying Jesus because that is the Spirit's desire. That is His purpose, to glorify Jesus in all things. How does the combination of Word and Spirit work in the midst of decision-making? The people of God put the Word of God into our lives. We saturate our lives with the Word of God. And when we face certain situations, the Holy Spirit brings to our minds and convicts our hearts using the scriptures that fit that situation. The people of God, let me say that again, we saturate our minds and our hearts with the Word of God. And when we face certain situations and certain decisions, the Spirit of God is at work in our life, bringing to us those sections of Scripture that fit within the framework of those decisions that we're making, that fit that context of those decisions. Uh, let's use an example. Um, so, July. Uh, I'll, I'll try and be as controversial just to keep you awake. Uh, as I possibly can be here, right? July, uh, the governor says, hey, if you're inside, you got to wear a mask and issues a statewide mask mandate. And on a personal level, I begin to wrestle with that. I wrestle with it because I don't like wearing masks. I mean, you know, we don't wear them all the time. They're, they're not comfortable or fashionable. And, you know, there's, there's that issue. 
Um, and there's other issues. I'm, I'm not going to go into all of that, but there's some other frustrations in terms of, you know, how this came about and whether this should happen and all of that kind of stuff. And so I'm sitting down and I begin to pray, both personally, how am I going to handle the mask mandate that was just given, as well as I have a little larger responsibility in terms of helping a group of people make decisions about how they're going to handle that mask mandate. And as I'm sitting there praying, what is it that God's Spirit is doing during that time? Right? He is at work elevating the Scriptures in my heart and mind that apply to that particular situation. Right? That's what God's Spirit does. Again, I, I'm not waiting for Him to write in the clouds what my response should be. No, God's Spirit is at work in my heart and mind elevating those Scriptures that apply most to that particular situation. And so as I'm sitting there thinking and praying, right, scriptures start to come into my heart. And, my, and, and just for those of you who at this point are like, well, I don't have the Bible memorized. God didn't bring those scriptures into my heart and mind word for word, <laughs> right? Um, that, that isn't what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I've got the whole Bible memorized, and he just slotted them in word for word. That'd be great if I did, but, but that's not the case. But instead, he starts to remind me of concepts that we find in Scripture. And so, uh, Ephesians 4.26 comes to my mind. Right? Ephesians 4.26 says, In your anger, do not sin. And it's a reminder to me as I'm sitting there stewing, it's okay to be frustrated. God says it's okay to be angry and frustrated. Uh, right? that's, that's not a problem in and of itself if I'm frustrated about some of what's going on. But he also instructs me very clearly that out of that frustration, I am not to sin. There's a whole lot of sins he lists, and my frustration is never an excuse to go there, in there. So that, it's a good reminder that God's Spirit is bringing to me as I'm praying about this and thinking about this. Uh, of course, as he so often does because of my sin nature, he brings Philippians 2, 14 and 15 to my mind. Can you tell how frustrated I get by how many times he brings that particular passage to my mind? Do everything without complaining or grumbling, everything, ah, right? Come on, do everything without complaining or grumbling or arguing so that you might be found blameless and pure children of God who shine like lights in the midst of this corrupted and twisted generation. Okay, if I'm going to shine for God, he says, that's got to be about me not grumbling and complaining. <sighs> okay, Ephesians 4.29 comes to my mind. What does that say? Let no unwholesome talk, come. and again, I, I, you know, I've got it written down here, but does it come into my mind word for word? No, but I know the concept from Ephesians 4.29 is something about using my words to build people up and speak grace rather than tear people down. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I got, I got that one. He also begins to bring to my mind some other passages that relate to it in different ways. Uh, passages like Titus 3, 1 and 2. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities. Oh, man, that almost sounds like it's written to a pastor, right? Remind them to be submissive uh, to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to, oh, boy, this is where it gets hard, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Whew, man, right? Like, you're reading that in the middle of the election cycle, perfect courtesy to all people. Hmm, all right. 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. Romans 13, 1, let every person be subject or submissive to the governing authorities. And, and so I'm, I'm thinking about these things that God is bringing to my mind. And, and of course, he's also bringing familiar passages like James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it all joy, all joy when you encounter trials of various kinds. Oh man, 100% joy? Really? All right, right? So, so as we're sitting here in the midst of the decision-making cycle, right, how is God speaking? God's Spirit is elevating His Word within our minds and hearts in order to tell us what we're to do in that particular situation. He is bringing passages to mind that directly relate to that particular situation, in my opinion, right? What other scriptures might He have brought to mind I mean, you don't have to say to my mind, but what, right, what other kinds of scriptures might he have brought to my mind, brought to mind in that situation? 
Love, love your neighbor as yourself? Yep. Yeah. So I, I, this, it's not my intention here to try and make everyone feel guilty about mass mandates or anything like that. That isn't, that isn't my intention. But uh, the big decisions, the hard decisions, are the ones that where we dig in the most, right? And, we're, Lord, what, I, I, I honestly didn't pray one time this morning about whether or not I was going to put my right shoe on first or my left shoe on first. Not one time did I pray about that. Right? When, when I went to the store this week to buy milk, I bought two gallons of milk instead of one, and that was entirely based on the amount of cereal I have left in the house. Right? I, I didn't even pray about it. But there are certain decisions in life about which we get anxious, and we shouldn't be anxious about anything, but instead we should give thanks and pray about those things. And, and in those situations where we've got those kinds of decisions, we dig in, we start to pray, and we ask the Lord to speak to us through his word. Uh, for this to happen, um, God's spirit takes his word and presses it upon our life. We have to saturate ourselves with the word of God. Um, we have to saturate our lives with the word of God. I love Proverbs chapter 2. Um, it says, My son, if you receive my words... And treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. Well, look just for a moment at the pursuit words there. Seek, search, incline, treasure. Uh, last week, I lost the remote control for my television. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't even know where the button is to turn the TV on. And for a moment, I looked under a cushion. I looked around on the floor, couldn't find it. And I went in the other room and fired up my computer and started doing something else. Uh, just didn't care enough to keep looking beyond that, right? <laughs> Uh, it wasn't a, a real thorough search that I made. Several years ago, a guy gave me a check at a lunch that I went to for $50,000 for the church. I put the church in my, I put the church, wow, that would be impressive. I put the check in my wallet and went home. Later on, I don't know, a day later, I couldn't find my wallet anywhere. And now, not only am I going through all the hassle that many of us in the room have been through of trying to cancel all your cards and get new cards issued and all that kind of stuff, now I am thinking about having to go back to that guy and tell him that that $50,000 check he wrote is lost because I'm irresponsible. You guys, the amount of searching that went on for my wallet in that situation... Every member of the family, I think my kids were like 13 and 11 at the time. I, they were helping with the search. My wife is helping with the search. Uh, if I had been willing to admit my mistakes to others, I would have called more people in in order to help with the search. What, like, I did not stop searching until I finally found that wallet, which had fallen down on the side of the seat in the car, down underneath, under there, fell out of my pocket apparently down. Anyway. Like, oh my goodness, we, we would have looked for five days straight. Uh, and there are different kinds of searches. And I, and I think so often we, we may search the scriptures like I searched for the remote and then wonder, God, why aren't you speaking to me about the decisions that I have? Uh, but the writer of Proverbs says, you guys, we're to, we're to seek and search intently like I did for the wallet. And if that is the way we approach the scriptures, th there are some things that happen. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Where does it come from? From the mouth of God. Romans 12.2 says that our minds are transformed. Right? They're, I'm sorry, our, minds are, uh, we're, our lives are transformed as our minds are renewed. Right? Our lives are transformed as our minds are renewed. And so we saturate our minds with the scriptures, like Proverbs 2 talks about, so that 
God will use his word in order to speak into our particular decisions and 